This exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Today we're going to take a little look at tracking traffic signs. Boy, there's a tongue twister. Um, take a look at what it takes to track the signs, to tell how much um, maintenance has been done to them. You, you know, when you have like s over 4,500 signposts, you know, with 6,500 signs attached to them all over the county, um, trying to figure out you know, what you've done to them, what you need to do to them, um, and keep permanent records. It's, you know, it's challenging and costly. So here's a look at what we're doing. It was created by our IT department. Uh, a lot of agencies already have, um, you know, IT departments, and you're already paying a basic fee uh, most of the time to those departments, to the IT department to, um, you know, so do your technology and your, um, you know, computer upgrades and all that stuff. So um, what we did is we put them to work a little bit on some um, ArcGIS. What they had to do is go out and secure the program. So I can't really say how much it costs because our cost, like my boss said, um, he pays $100,000 a year for all of his computer programs, you know, to run the whole, you know, all the computers. You know, that includes, you know, upgrades and this and that. So... And then, you know, the uh, IT, they get the licensing. And I know a lot of agencies are already using the ArcGIS program. So it's just something they could add in. So let's take a look at um, what we're doing. Okay, here's a look at our sign collector program that we're using. Um, I work for the county of Napa. There's our county right there, Napa, California. Um, here on the West Coast of the United States. And here is San Francisco right here. It's kind of like I show you about where Napa County is. Uh, Great little program here. It really shows a lot of detail. Um, there's the Golden Gate Bridge. There's Alcatraz. Um, you can see the the pin, you know, the, the rock. That's what they used to call it. Uh, used to ha house Al Capone, Frank Nitty, some of the other guys, the mobs. Anyways, um, enough of the tour of San Francisco. Let's get going here in Napa County. So the sign collector program that we've used We've used other programs in the in the past, and you know they they got expensive, and um, so my boss pays a hundred thousand dollars not for this program, but his department pays a hundred thousand dollars to our IT department at the county. You know it's like kind of like money just keeps changing hands between all the departments. So he pays a flat fee of a hundred thousand dollars, and that's for all the computer technology. You know, keep on our iPads and stuff, and that's not just our little department. You know, that's that's all of. Um, you know, the roads, you know, all of our computer systems that we use and everything. And um, I'm sure all of everybody who works for government agencies has an IT department, IT department. So it's not going to be a, a real um, cost bearing factor in this thing. Because some of these programs, I've heard of them costing a couple hundred thousand dollars just to get them set up, you know, for them to come out and track all your stuff. So we do it ourselves here. So if you zoom in a little bit closer, you see all the little dots. And with the little dots, they have little numbers. And those little numbers are unique. Each number is unique. And it has its own um, sign. There might be one or two signs on it. There could be you know, street signs. There could be two street signs on it, a stop sign, and an uh, all-way sign below it. So there, there, there's various signs that have just more than one sign. And I think we're up to like 4,400 posts and about 6,600 signs here in the county. And so what this does is it, it tracks all of our, our programs, um, it tracks all of our signs, it's helping us keep track of where they're located, what type of sign it is. Um, let's pull up one here. Um, let's pull up this 2277. What it's going to do, it, it tracks, there's a sign number, um, the MUTCD, it's a BLM-1, which is a Bureau of Land Management. It's a, a, a sign for um, a recreational area up there, Lake Berryessa. Um, tells the support types, two and a half inch tell spars, mounting height. Um, who made the sign? We had a contractor make this one. I believe, yeah, because it was a fire replacement sign. So the date the sign was replaced was um, December 17th. Um, the post was last replaced in the 19th. I think this one had a, 
a, uh, somebody hit this post, I replaced the post. Date of the new installation was done in, uh, April 9th, uh, 2014. So here we are, six years later, we had to replace it because of a fire. And with this, you can also download pictures onto it. So there was a picture of the sign before the fire, and you can see it got pretty toasted. And then here's a picture of the sign after it was all completed. So we have a history. We got reimbursed by FEMA. So we needed before and after pictures. So there's the um, two and a half inch tell spars. You can see the fire, how it just raged this whole area here. Um, so there's, you know, the one little part about it. And then if you want to make any kind of edits on it, here's the edit mode. Um, it's got all these drop down menus and you can select um, like say the Telspar two and a half inch Telspar you can select various different um, uh, types of supports so the drop down menus are all added, added by the IT department yeah, every time I need to add a new field I just email the IT and say hey can you add this field um, some of them you don't need to have the uh, drop down menus if they're just open like this without the arrow you can go in and change it however you want so there's a little, uh, it, it tracks each sign. And I, I do have an iPad that we take out with this periodically. Not periodically, it's with this all the time. And when we make changes, we make the changes on the iPad. It's updated every 15 minutes. It contacts the server and it upgrades it here. Because this model here that I'm showing you now is a desktop model that sits inside the sign shop office. So we can't take it. Obviously, we're not going to take the PC out with this, nor are we going to take a laptop that's just too much work. So, you know, too much effort to, you know, log in all the time. So what we have is this um, collector app, and whenever it gets um, cell phone service, it updates it whenever we make changes out in the field, and then it makes the changes here. So, like, for example, um, Sign 962, I believe it was the last one I installed up here. Yeah, so this was a new install up here. Um, shows all the specifics on it. Um, this is in the edit mode. Um, you, you fill in all your specifics here. Let's get out of this edit mode and let's go to just the details. Okay, so here, this will show us the complete. So here's sign 962, and that's the location of the sign. That's the not location so much, but the ID of the sign. So that's post number 962. Um, it, it shows what type of sign it was, the, the road that it's on, the type of support. You know, all these fields you can add in however you want. Um, it's mounted six feet, diamond gray, the size of it. Um, and I showed you the pictures of it already. Oh, no, I haven't showed you the pictures. So Steve Stanglin, our boss, he, he authorized the sign. He wanted it put out. So in this area, a lot of guardrail got burned up from a fire. So it's just, you know, really bad. The road's really bad. It's an isolated area up in the county. So we had put this adverse conditions, use extreme caution. You know, let people know that there's, you know, problems up ahead you know, drive with extreme caution. And then um, to follow it up, the road is really dipped and it's just not a pretty road. So there's another one I installed on the same day. Um, it's a 36 by 36. And see this one at two? Well, there's another sign on it too. And it says it's a um, W7-3, it's a warning sign. And the sign description says next 15 miles, it's on a Telspar post. And let's see if I have the picture of it. Oh, here it is right here. So this is what the sign looked like. It's low vehicles, not advised uh, for the next 15 miles because it's really a almost a four-wheel drive type of um, road up there. So there's a little bit there. And then sometimes what you can do on these signs too, which is really neat, it, the information stays on them. Let's go to this particular sign, sign number 235. It's a speed limit sign that I put in. Um, I know I put that, so if I drive by that sign and I go, yeah, I know I put that sign in, but when did I put that sign in? You know, and somebody says, well, when did you install that sign? I, I don't remember. Who told you to? Uh, I don't remember. So you can keep all the information on the sign. Let's just expand this up a little bit. So this particular sign has two signs on it. See, one of two. So it has a speed limit 50. It's a R2-1. And it has a 50 mile an hour speed limit sign on it. And there's another one, sign number two is a R48-1, which is a radar enforced sign below it. So people might ask, well, who, who told you to do that? I go, well, right here, one wants additional radar enforced signs installed to it. 
So I keep this, so I say, okay, here's who told me to install it. So if there's a problem, you go talk to them. Don't talk to me. I'm just, I just work here. So, and then um, here is the, whoops, that's the same one. So here's the resolution. You know, every sign needs a resolution. You don't, can't just go put up a 50 mile an hour sign and say, yeah, let's, let's make this road 50. You have to have speed surveys and all that stuff. So here's the, right here, here's the resolution that authorized that speed limit change so that I can pull this up really quick. And if somebody wants to know, well, who, who authorized that? Well, the board of directors authorized that. So, you know, like I said, don't, don't bother me. I just work here. Here's, here's go after these guys, find out, you know, why they wanted this put in. So there's a little bit on, on the signs. So whenever we um, install a sign, I always take the iPad out with me. And we install it, and I put all the data in on the iPad. And then, like I said, every 15 minutes, it just updates onto this automatically. Uh, one thing about it, though, suppose we were to do this sign. And here's a problem we ran into is, so right now, the date of the new installation, the edit date, that doesn't pertain. But um, so here's the treatment, new installation. So if I come back in here, and I want to edit this sign and here's the treatment date, the new installation, date of the new installation. Now I want to come in and I want to do something different to the sign. Um, it's, you're going to lose that information, you know, like the installation date and the treatment. So the treatment's going to change. Suppose I want to do vegetation. So you're going to come back and you go, well, that, I don't know when that was installed. So you have to keep records. Whenever you do maintenance on a sign, you have to do records. So what this program does all of two is it backs up all of our maintenance history on a separate program. It's called the sign master report. Okay. So let's view that sign um, number 235, for example. So here's the sign, uh, the R2-1 and the R48. So it gives all the history of the sign, um, the, the description, if you follow across there, the notes, subdivision, cross streets, the support type, mounting height, sign material, size of the signs, um, County of Napa installed them. Um, who was it requested by? It was requested by our um, traffic engineer. And I had all those things back there to sh show what, what, how that went. And so it um, keeps all the history. So anytime history is added to that sign, it's just going to make another line. It's not going to edit these lines. It's just going to add an additional. So this will always stay. And then if I trim the vegetation, I had to clean the sign, I have to replace the sign. Uh, somebody ran it over. It'll always have, it'll just keep adding new fields. So you'll never lose those fields and you'll always have those records. Okay. So that's our sign master program. So let's go back and say, let's take uh June 1st, 2020, till the end of October, okay? Clear that field out. I'm gonna clear that field out and then uh, view the report. So now here's a history of all the signs. Now what it does is it went ahead and it put them all in um, a sign ID number. So if I wanna go down and find out what I did on a particular road, you're gonna go, oh my goodness, how am I gonna do that? Because you can't sort these fields. They're just in there. So. No worries, we just come up here, we're gonna click Excel. So now it's gonna throw everything into an Excel field or Excel file. Um, so here we are in Excel. All those things are in Excel now. So anybody who's familiar with Excel, it's not too hard to navigate around in Excel. So let's take the view, um, freeze pane. Let's just freeze that top row. See, I froze that top row, so it's gonna always stay there. Now let's sort these into something that we can see or that we can work with. So let's take the road number, for example, uh, go back home and let's sort those. Let's do a custom sort. Uh, let's sort those by road name and number. Let's add a level. Let's do those then by milepost marker. So it puts them in order of, you know, from the beginning of the road to the end of the road and add a level. Let's do it by, um, Let's go MUTCD. So they all stay, all the signs stay together. 
if they're on one particular post, they're going to stay all together. And let's just click OK. So now everything is, see, it's changed the order. Everything is in road order now. Um, say we have this one road, uh, Barry S. and Knoxville Road. It's a pretty good size road. Um, I think it's one of our longest roads. So here's here's a little section, Barry S. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to select all of them. Okay, so here's all the Barry S. and Knoxville Road. Let's give those a color so we can, just for this video purpose, we can see them better. So here they are all, all in order, mile post marker order. And um, that way you can go down and you can pick out a particular road. Suppose you're just interested in one certain road. You can just highlight the areas you want and select it. And up here, you know, Excel, you can always like some of these I might not need like the, um, well, let's keep the incident name. Some of these out here I might not need like the sync date. I don't care when it was synchronized with the with my server. You know, you can hide some of your columns that just pertain to your particular. Um, it shows who edited those. It's an active sign. Um, you can just change it however you want. But it's a, it's a good history, and you're always going to have all these uh, history of the signs in here. Because what it's going to do then, let me scroll over here. So it's always going to tell you, okay, replace a missing sign, accident damage, new installations, vegetation control, accident damage. Uh, replace both sign and post so you have more vegetation control on the sign so and then here we had the fire replacement when we had the fires up there so you're always going to have a history that's always going to stay with you and you won't have to do it the old-fashioned way like we used to do it where we'd have to go in and um, do it by by road or on an excel sheet and then it was painstakingly slow to look up all the history sometimes i could spend a two days straight days just finding information on one particular road so now this is going to store all our information now granted we didn't start this until july or june of 2020 but at least we've got something now moving forward now to go back to the past to find stuff now i got to go back the old way and look through some old excel spreadsheets okay another thing um i forgot to show you earlier we'll go back and i'll show you this what's great about it too is this sign particularly right here 3390 Okay, it was a um, adopter road litter control sign. Got hit. Okay. And there's a sign after it was straightened out. So what I do then is I go ahead, it was hit twice, believe it or not, within a short period of time. And so when I went in, so this was the last time it was hit. Um, I, I went back in and it changed the, the, uh, date right here from the last time but it went back and it saved it under the sign master okay because like I said this this never goes away these fields will change so then what we did is when somebody hits a sign here in the county and I keep it on each traffic sign so I can go back whether it was um, a CHP report was pulled or not and we go ahead and we um we bill the people for our um, time. So uh, the sign blank costs, the materials, the vehicle use, um, the sign post, the sign anchor, um, our labor. You know, we charged them four hours labor because we had to go up, pick up the sign, go make it, bring it back. So we spent half, you know, half of our day just fixing that sign. So, um, and here it is, labor includes drive times to and from, making the sign and installing the sign, sign replaced on 5421, and it costs $756.35 just for doing that, because we had to replace the sign and the post was no good. Um, the, the anchor was bent, so the, the whole thing got changed. So there's another um, thing that we do too to, to keep track of the signs. So that's always going to stay in there all the time. So when we have to go back with the insurance company, they'll say, well, how do you know it was, we don't have any proof it was damaged. Well, there you go. It was damaged right there. Plus there's a CHP report that goes along with it. We'll have to go back and look that up. We, we log all of our CHP reports and I usually don't save those. I'll go back to the sign if I have to. But there, you know, that's another way that we use this um, sign program for tracking our stuff. And also, um, we can put it on any sign, particularly like this one here with the speed limit. If it was bad, so what we do is we, we'll keep track of the uh, 
uh, right in here, current sign status, it's active. And we can also say it needs a replacement if we went out and found out that it was a uh, bad sign during uh, our reflectivity checks. And we can log that, and then we can go back in and find that later. So that's a, it's a good little program that we have right there. So I'll, and then also at the, in this video, I'm going to include, I'll show you the iPad um, portion of it that we use. But this is how we're keeping track of our signs. And so far, it's been really good for us. Like I said, it keeps track. It's going to keep our history. Um, it's going to keep pictures in the signs. It's going to keep, uh, you know, just various things I showed you. It shows I can keep the resolutions in there. Uh, I can keep track of some of the email correspondence on who told me to do this or that. I always get I always get the guys to send me an email or anything like that so they can show me what they they want. So that that works out pretty good for us. Okay, another program that is included with it is the ArcGIS Pro version. Um, it's a little bit more complicated. I, I, I could just barely navigate around it, and I'll show you some of the stuff that I use it for. Okay, here again, all the dots represent our traffic signs. So, okay, suppose we want to find out where the uh, bike... Oh, let's, let's pick a sign. Oh, let's find out where all the stop signs are, okay? So we're going to go um, under the Sign Master... Uh, we're going to do a new expression, and we're going to go M-U-T-C-D, and let's go um, R1-1, okay? Click Apply, and then we're going to come over here, and we're going to go on the desktop. We're going to save this. Let's go Stop, Sign, Locations. Save that, and we're going to run that. Okay, so it's completed. Let's go here to stop sign locations. And now this is going to show us where all the stop signs are. And then again, you can do, um, it's an Excel sheet. So we'll do the view, and we want to freeze panes. We want to just freeze the top row. Um, let's put all these in order. Um, um, let's go sort, uh, custom sort. Uh, we're going to go the road name and number. Uh, at a level, let's do mile post marker. So each road, and then uh, let's do the MUTCD. Okay, so now all, the, all of our stop signs that we have um, are all on each, shows alphabetically on each road. So how many stop signs do we have in the whole county? We can go down to the bottom of the Excel sheet. We'll have to add one because they call this one one. So we have 367 stop signs in the county of Napa. And it, it shows us, um, you can look and see, well, what kind of, it'll show you if they're on wood post or if they're on uh, metal post. What we would like to do is change out all the wood ones with metal ones. So, you know, you have high storms with winds and stuff that doesn't break the, the post. So what we could do is we could just uh, sort these A to Z and it shows us all the metal. So we could go ahead and make a spreadsheet. Here we go. So all these wood post signs starting here at, uh, where is it, right about here. So we could go down if we wanted to and just you know, make a make a list of these, and uh, let's let's just highlight these a different color. Let's just call it the yellow right now. So all these that have the wooden posts, we want to replace them, like say someday with uh, metal posts. So now we have a list going on, and we could just go out and systematically replace them if we wanted to. So there's another um, little module that we use the the Pro, and you can pull up all kinds of things with the Pro. Um, you can pull up. When you're selecting for these uh, attributes, um, the new expressions, and then you've got all kinds of ways you could sort these things. If you want to find out, um, you know, sign materials, which signs are made out of engineer grade, is there any left out there that are engineer grade or, or this or that? Um, current sign status, if you want to find out all the signs that need to be replaced, like, like I said, you can change the status and the other thing, it'll go back and grab all the ones that need um, replacing. Uh, specialty signs that we have. 
uh, if we want to find out where a particular specialty sign is that we have, like flashing beacons or anything like that, it'll go in there and it'll sort it out and you can find it. So it's a, another nice little tool that IT came up with this. Uh, can't say enough about those IT guys. They're pretty, pretty on it. So there's basically the, the three things that we're using with that. And one other thing that we do use with it is a work order. So here's the work order. They send me a work order. And um, I open it up, and it'll tell me, okay, on Los Amigos Road, um, it, whoop, Los Amigos Road in Bayview, so so and so called, and report the Chevron lights weren't working. Um, so car accident, he's afraid it'll keep happening. Yeah, we had a somebody ran off the road, hit a sign. He called it in. So now there's this work request um, sent in with it. And um, so I made a little note. It said I need to get a quote and a PO to replace the sign. So I'm going to work on that. So we can, they can always go back and say, the guy can call back again and say, hey, you know, what's the process, you know, progress of that sign? And they'll say, oh, well, we're waiting for a quote and a PO. And that way, um, whoever originated this can go back and say, oh, let me check. Oh, okay, we're waiting for the PO. And if I want to add notes to it, my boss can say, well, gee, what's, what's going on? I say, well, we're waiting for a quote. So he can, um, you know, do that. And then you can attach these to your, your sign. Um, you can make these work orders too. You can pull them up off of your sign, like, like the one that needs to be replaced. And you can tailor it. Like I said, our IT department did all this. So you can um, tailor it to however it fits you. And you can say, okay, uh, road number, such and such, location of work, sign number, da da da, needs to be replaced. Um, and you can send it off to the re responsible party. It's, it's, it's you know, pretty good system that we have going on, I believe. Um, it's not the perfect system, but each one of these tracking systems is different. Now, in order to put all these signs into your system, there's no um, way, you know, they just don't appear there. You have to go place them in sign by sign. Unless you have all your signs already GPS and everything, then you're, I, that's what we did. I had them all GPS from another previous program that I had, and all they did is just import them over. Well, there you have it. A little look on how we're tracking our signs and some of the programs we use. You know, it's not easy keeping track of all that. We used to keep track the old-fashioned way on paper and uh, Excel spreadsheets, and that's tough. Um, so this is by far one of the best programs we've had so far and a lot of times when these um you know people come to you know how many signs are on this road what have we done to this road you know and um you know what kind of maintenance have we done on those signs well they come to the right place that's right they turn to the site man as always thanks for watching <music>